Excuse me. Are you looking at me? Did you rub my lamp? Did you wake me up? Did you bring me here? And all of a sudden, you're walking out on me? Nuh-uh. I don't think so. Not right now. You're getting your wishes, so sit down. Good morning, Good morning. Hey, this is not a test. This is rock and roll. Ten thousand years will give you such a crick in the neck. Got to be good looking cause he's so hard to see. Comes he's the day. If you ever disrespect my wife again, I'll end you. Over me. <laughs> no matter what anybody says, you'll always be a prince to me. Welcome, welcome, welcome to NYC Actors Talk, Robin Williams, a podcast series where we go through the best performances of Robin Williams and search for his greatest role. What is his greatest role? I got no clue, but Nick, that is why we're here. Exactly, Hunter, that is why we're here. And today, on this very special episode, we talk, yada da, Aladdin, my dudes and dudettes. Uh, yeah, so our, we have a very special guest today, uh, Brianna Gentilella. Brianna, welcome. Hi, thanks so much for having me. This is so fun and exciting. Yeah, it's, um, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Brianna is a wonderful voice actress and actress singer, a uh, uh, beautiful singer, a uh, good friend of mine. We haven't talked in a while, but this is why this is why we're doing this in, in in a way. You know, we're talking Aladdin. It's nice to reconnect over. Aladdin. Over Aladdin. <laughs> uh, so yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome. It's gonna be Thank this you. is gonna be so fun talking Aladdin. Um, so just to set some things up before we dive deep into um, uh, so 1992 film, uh, Disney animated film, obviously. Um, it's the fourth Disney Renaissance film. Uh, so basically, this was like the peak 90s era where like. Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, and everyone's favorite, Rescuers Down Under. Uh, <laughs> um, but, you know, the, the Renaissance era was, was where, you know, we, we have all these very popular, well-liked Disney films. And Aladdin was the fourth one, and uh, at the time became uh, Disney's one of, if not their most successful film. So this is... This is just a huge one, and and obviously when it comes to just Robin Williams himself, I mean, this is kind of the role. Arguably, this is the role that he's best known for. I mean, when people think of Robin Williams, they think of the genie. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is the movie that I grew up with, Robin Williams. Like, even watching it now, I was like, oh, this is like a, it's like a comfort movie almost. Yeah, so nostalgic. Takes me back. Also because he's so in a weird like welcoming to the viewer that it kind of feels like i don't know for me it felt like oh i'm gonna sit down with my cup of tea and watch my good friend robin williams for like do his thing yes e emphasis on friend because like yeah, yeah he i mean like the song says but also just like but it's true like the performance is so warm that it's almost like you're seeing a friend again yeah exactly yeah, it's very, very interesting, and only Robin Williams uh, could could do that. It's awesome. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, so this is a huge movie. Let's get into it, guys. Let's get into the <laughs> yeah, da, da. Um, Aladdin. Oh. Uh, so yeah, uh, Brianna, let's start with you, special guest. Um, what are what are your overall thoughts on Aladdin? The movie in general. Well, yeah, the I movie mean, in general. Not the guy. Not just not the <laughs> How do you feel um, about Aladdin? Is he cool? He's a street <laughs> rat. He's a cool guy. He's, He's a, a cool guy. guy. He's cool. Street rat. No, I I I mean again, it's it's I think one of my favorite Renaissance Disney Renaissance movies. Um, not only because of Genie, but also as, you know, Jasmine was a great princess. She was kicking out the princess mold. And really, 
you know, she wanted to be like, I want to do things. I don't just want to be a princess. That was a big deal for me. Yeah, she's um, independent. Yeah, yeah. And in the musical version, she gets like a lot more of that. The the stage musical. Right. Um, and uh, I had a big crush on Aladdin when I was younger. So we all we all had like a crush. We all did. We all did. I had a crush on Aladdin. I'm straight, and I yeah. love the guy. Yeah. <laughs> right. Who doesn't? But um. Yeah, and I think, uh, like we said before, Genie's a big reason why we kind of love the movie. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Uh, Hunter, <laughs> Hunter, Hunter, hey, look at me, hey, look at me. Hey, Nick. <laughs> hey, Nick. <laughs> uh, what, are you, what are your thoughts on Aladdin? I mean, obviously, uh, we've all rewatched it, you know, uh, we, we've seen this movie a bunch of times. But for this new watch, uh, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, I mean, uh, growing up with this movie, I loved it. it. This was always my favorite Disney movie. So I was excited to kind of revisit it as an adult. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it holds up. The animation holds up. The The voice acting holds up. The singing holds up. Everything about this movie could come out like last year and not the not the Will Smith version. But like this movie, if this came out like today, it'd be like, oh my God, this is still amazing. And Robin Williams doing all the voices and all the like crazy stuff. It's like, oh man, you're like, we kind of touched on, but like you're along for the ride with him. And that's so awesome. So yeah, this movie's fucking great. Yeah, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but... Uh, obviously, of course, I agree with you guys. It's uh, it's an all timer. I mean, like this this movie is still being, you know, referenced today. Uh, you know, everyone's still singing the songs. Everyone's still quoting the genie. It, it's just like it's 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 pretty much perfect. I mean, like it's one of my favorites too. I grew up with it. Um, I used to watch it a lot as a kid. I remember remember the VHS. Like I can picture oh, yeah. the VHS where yeah. it's like Aladdin and Jasmine on the carpet and, and Genie's like looking at him like, <laughs> you know, like I could, I could just see it. It's, it's so nostalgic yeah. for me, but, but also like, you know, like movies that we've already mentioned in the series, Hunter, like Doubtfire and Jumanji. I, I think especially Jumanji, like those are nostalgic movies too, but like this one is really good. I mean, I like Doubtfire too, but this one is like you know, another level, you know? Yeah. Well, like when we revisited Jumanji, it's like, ah, it doesn't hold up. It's not very good anymore. In my humble, stupid opinion. And my <laughs> humble, stupid opinion too. Yeah. But, but this movie's freaking awesome. It's such, and it's so short. It's so short. Yeah. It goes so fast. It is short. It's a tight hour and a half, I think, like more or less. And Robin Williams doesn't show up until 30 minutes in again. Oh. Right. And, and you know, we, we've mentioned this in Jumanji and, and other movies, too, where, like, it, it takes a while for him to show up in these movies sometimes. Mm. Uh, like Insomnia, he doesn't show up for, like, an hour. Uh, but, yeah, for this one, yeah, it takes, like, 30, almost 35 minutes for him to show up. But you, you almost don't care because the movie's good. But also, like, it's a buildup. It's like, all right, when's he coming out? When's he coming out of that lamp? <laughs> You know, he but and when he shows up, it's like it's wonderful. It's an iconic entrance when he shows up. I mean, it's like building up, building up, and then finally he comes out. And when I was a kid, um, when Aladdin rubs the lamp and he spurts out of it, I initially was so freaked out because there was smoke, and I was like, "Oh my god, what is that?" But then he makes it so like lovable and hilarious right like the second he starts talking. I was like, "Oh, I don't have to be freaked out. He's cool." <laughs> Ten thousand years, <laughs> such a crick in the neck. And what's so brilliant about that introduction too is like he comes out and he and he's like it's a shadowy figure. Like he looks like really yeah. buff and scary. And then oi, yeah. <laughs> and then and then and then you're along for the ride for the rest of the movie. It's just so good. Um, so yeah, th this is a. This is an iconic movie, so it's going to be hard to not just, like, gush over, like, the whole thing. Like, oh, this was great. Oh, this was great. Robin Williams is perfect in this. He, uh, just like Fisher King, it, it, he's used perfectly. It, there, There's not a beat. There's not a moment that isn't amazing and or, or well-timed. 
from not only like his performance but also through the amazing animation and i want to shout out uh the animator the main animator at least who who worked on the genie uh for this movie uh eric goldberg uh he's a very famous uh disney animator and just tremendous work i mean the way he's so fluid and the way like it's perfect like you know it, and as we mentioned in other episodes you know like Robin, you know, uh, when you play to his strengths, you know, he he's an impressionist. He's a comedian. So, like, you know, this movie very specifically and very, uh, very greatly uses his talents in that way where it's like, okay, he's going to be this character now. He's going to be Jack Nicholson. He's going to be this character and that character. And it's just like, and the animation can follow that. You know what I mean? Like, it's not just, like, Robin Williams doing great and then the rest of the movie is kind of like, eh. Like, the movie itself is also, like, working with him, you know? <laughs> it's it's perfect. It, uh, and we'll get into it more later. But, yeah, uh, I love this movie. Uh, the whole movie's great, too. I mean, we, there's so many great characters in it, too. It, like, it's not just Robin. It's it's the whole shebang. Uh, so, yeah, I, I love this movie, too. Yeah. Yeah, this mo- it has a lot of heart, too. Like, it makes you tear up. At a lot of points, even before Robin Williams gets in, it's all like, like there's a specific moment that I always want to touch on whenever I like think or talk about Aladdin is right after um, Aladdin sings that like, dun, 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 and then like he goes up to like where he lives and he's all like riff raff street that uh, like, I don't buy like that. Like, that or yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, if they look closer. Would they see a poor boy? No story or whatever. That moment makes me like cry every time. And I'm like, hey, how are they doing this? Like, you know what I mean? It's like those people don't exist. Like they're just like drawings. It's amazing. The animal characters are really fun to watch in my opinion. I mean, Abu is like hilarious. And then uh, Raja, like I like these animal characters and I, I wanted the stuffed animal. I wanted like the Raja stuffed animal when I was a kid. I don't know. Oh, I'd also just like to shout out another like really big voice actor who does a million voiceover roles in all Disney movies and literally everything. His name's Jim Cummings and he yes. did the voice of Raja. He did the voice of like all the soldiers, I guess. Yeah, he, he yeah, he's he's definitely the guard, the main guard. Yeah. Uh, with the big teeth. Um, yes. <laughs> but, but also, yeah, but he's, as, as you know, of course, Brianna, but, uh, but he's, he's w- m- most well known for like Winnie the Pooh, Tigger. That too. Yeah. These are big, these are big roles. I mean, you just find him in literally everything. Just want to shout him out. <laughs> <laughs> just want to shout out our, our, our just want to shout out our, our boy, Jim. Right? <laughs> Jim, if you're listening, thank you. Yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, uh, let's let's kind of start from the from the beginning, I suppose. Uh, so we, we start with Arabian Night, the the, uh, the the iconic song. It's a great introduction uh, to the world and everything. And then we we see uh, the narrator guy who is also played by Robin Williams. Yeah, he's like the peddler guy or the he doesn't really narrate the whole movie. He just narrates that first like two seconds, and then he does like all this shtick. And you just know that Rob Williams was like in the booth, like, can I just go with it? And they, yeah, sure, just just do whatever you want. <laughs> Here's the script as a skeleton, if even, and you know, Robin delivers every single time. And I, yeah. for the longest time, I had no idea the peddler guy in the beginning was Robin Williams. No, no idea. And actually, like, it's it's kind of canon, quote unquote, now that like it's supposed to be Genie, like, because he has four fingers and everything. That like the di- the directors are like yeah like it's it's kind of like genie in disguise in the beginning which is cool oh. but I'm glad you mentioned like riffing on in the recording booth because especially for this scene they they had just had like a, a a box full of stuff in a sound stage somewhere and they like they were like Robin come on in and just riff like whatever comes out of that box just like you know have, have a joke ready. Yeah. And and obviously it's Robin, so you know, he did like an excellent perfect job. I, what, what, there's a, there's a couple of really funny ones. <laughs> yeah. As a, yeah, as a kid I remember the part when he holds up the a little box and he goes, "Listen." And I was like, "That's so funny." <laughs> as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And and what was it a uh, a uh, 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 fry maker or like what is it? Like uh, it broke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I I also read that he did like like 
there's like 16 hours or so of like recordings of him from this movie because like they were just said let him go and that is something that in this series <laughs> i have always said that dude just let him freaking go just let him go and they did that in this movie and it's classic and it's 100 percent amazing yeah, I mean, like, as as you guys were saying, yeah, it's like a skeleton, like, okay, like, here's, like, the lines you have to say, but then I, I think, like, the second day into recording, Robin was like, can I play? Can I play? And uh, and and so he would just, like, yeah, do all these, just, just these really funny bits. I mean, like, you know, we'll get into it more, but, like, to me, like, this is definitely, definitely like, his funniest role. Oh, yeah. I think also if they didn't give him that freedom, you really wouldn't be doing anyone justice <laughs> i mean you can't have a an actual animated role that is more perfect a vessel for robin williams to do what he does the best i mean because anything can happen in animation right. so that's really exciting and really there's so much freedom there to do whatever you want i love that yeah uh perfectly said yeah that's that's totally it and uh and it's funny, like, uh, uh, he he did this movie first called, I, it was Fern Gully, he oh, played a bat. It was terrible. Um, terrible? I haven't <laughs> seen it in a while. The movie was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> and it scared me as a kid, because it was, like, about pollution, and it freaked me out. <laughs> I get the message they were going for, but it was some really creepy imagery. Yeah, so he was doing that at the time, and, uh... And then Disney was like, wait, wait, come over here. We want you to do something, too. <laughs> and and so it was like, uh, I think Eric Goldberg, the animator I mentioned, he he basically just did a few animated reels where it was just like he used his stand-up and, like, you know, just, you know, just, like, animated from that. And, like, and you could look it up online. It's like, a, it's like his uh, schizophrenia bit where like uh in, in a stand up and like just like like it's the genie head and then another head pops up as like his other voice and everything so it's just like really funny stuff and like that that's what sold robin that's uh the moment like he wanted to do the movie he was like all right i'll do it like perfect he was laughing his ass off um so yeah uh so that's that, that that's kind of the beginning of it all uh so as, as we continue on the movie uh yeah we see jafar we see iago uh, you know, he's, they're making shady deals. Uh, we got the Cave of Wonder, which still holds up. It looks great still. Scares the absolute crap out of me. Yeah. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Creepy, creepy imagery. Yes, yeah, uh, such a scary voice, too. <laughs> I think Frank, Wel Frank Welker voiced the uh, Cave of Wonder. That Wonders. would make sense, yeah. I, I, I know he voiced... Abu, um, in the movie, I, I I believe he is also the voice of the Cave of Wonders, but uh, but yeah. Also, uh, speaking of Abu, like he kind of sounds like Donald Duck. Is that just me? A little bit, <laughs> but like with some more monkey mannerisms, like some more ooh ooh ah ahs thrown in. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I never realized that Abu actually does kind of talk. Like he makes this weird voice, and I put subtitles on because I don't know if I'm snacking, I can't hear it. <laughs> No, me too. So yeah. I put subtitles on, and Abu is trying to wake up Aladdin, and he's it, the subtitle said Aladdin, Aladdin. I was like, is he talking? Yeah, he's like, oh, wow, 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 wow. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, that's really good. <laughs> that was actually <laughs> really good. Thank you. We're setting all this stuff up. The other guy dies. He's not the chosen one. A cave of wonders just swallows him whole. J uh, Jafar's like, all right, we got to find this diamond in the Roth, okay? Um, and, and so we cut to Aladdin, um, uh, played by, uh, the guy from Full House. What's his name? I forget. But, uh, uh, the, the boyfriend in, in, in Full House and, and we have the song One Jump Ahead. That song's awesome. Yeah, that song slaps. Yeah. It's like a banger. It's a banger. Banger. <laughs> it's a jam. It really is. <laughs> Like, they didn't have to go that hard for, for these songs. They really didn't. Like, you have yeah. Robin Williams, and that's enough. But then the <laughs> songs are good, too? It's crazy. Yeah, the score is beautiful. Alan Menken, uh, beautiful oh. music. Uh, but also, 
not all of the songs, but a good chunk of them were written by Howard Ashman, who um, uh, who is sadly not with us anymore. He passed away years and years ago from AIDS. But he was a wonderful songwriter. He did the the, the lyrics and and music for Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, and uh, and he passed away. I think a little bit after the uh, or maybe a little before actually the release of Beauty and the Beast, and then you know his work uh, that he already the the music that he was already working on for Aladdin was uh, used. Uh, so he didn't see the the final product of Aladdin. Oh damn. Aww. That's amazing that they can do that, though. Yeah, I mean, like, it seems at least Howard was just, like, even when he was sick, like, he was still, like, working, you know? Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, there's this beautiful uh, documentary on Disney+, Plus, I think simply called Howard, I believe, where it's all about his life. And he, you know, he did Little Shop of Horrors, you know, uh, mm -hmm. so he's a very famous, he was a very famous songwriter, so yeah. Uh, so yeah, the, I, I believe he did, uh, he wrote Friend Like Me, Prince Ali, um, and uh, I think something else. He didn't write Whole New World, though, but uh, I think Tim Rice wrote that one yeah, with, yeah. with Mencken. But but yeah, uh, but he, he did a, a, a couple of the the, the most uh, iconic songs of the movie. Yeah, that's um, that's amazing. I, I I always find that, I don't know, because you, you know me, I, with music and movies, I'm very weird. But, like, I actually noticed it going on in this movie. So not, not, weird. Not, Hunter, you're so weird. So, no, I really am. Cause I, I, I really am. Believe me, please. No, no, I really am. <laughs> no, but I, I won't notice music, like, like the score. I really won't, unless it's like, I don't know, like, but in this movie I did, and I, I applaud that. <laughs> we, we love to see it. We love to see me <laughs> notice something fucking going on. <laughs> uh, you know what, if I, if Hunter can notice it, it's good. It's good, man. <laughs> it's good, man. Uh, but yeah, so uh, we have this wonderful banger of a song. Uh, we, we're setting up basically like, you know, Aladdin's a thief, but he's not all bad. He still has a heart of gold because he gives the bread away to the little children who need it more than him. And then uh, it, uh, in a very interesting cameo by the directors, uh, the, uh, it's the two guys who like talk about the prince. I don't know if you know this, uh, but 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 they're basically just like the two guys going like, "Hey, that's the prince," and that those are the directors of the movie. Oh. Like the the design of them and the voices are the. Uh, so the guy who goes another suitor for the prince, and he goes like that with his. Neck. That's right. <laughs> another suitor for the, for the prince. <laughs> <laughs> wow, exactly. Cool, cool fact. I had no idea. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, the prince is an asshole to Aladdin. Um, he's Aladdin's just trying to help out, and and Aladdin's like, oh, what is it? Uh, oh look, a boo, a horse with two rear ends. Yeah. Ooh, got him. Got him. <laughs> 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 Such a good sweet burn right there. Right, yeah. Aladdin. Yeah. You know what? He has he has his moments. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's pretty quick. cool he's clever he's, he's a clever guy clever. <laughs> exactly um and yeah the prince you know just is like yeah shut up you you street rat and leaves and we have that wonderful song as you mentioned hunter and yeah it kind of tears me up every time too it's it's just like the score is just so beautiful in that moment yeah because yeah. he he's a dreamer you know what i mean i don't know it's very his character is very um like relatable i feel like it's like, oh, he just he's just a guy and he just wants more. And you know he's insecure I mean? and he's also yeah. insecure, you know, like a, as we'll get into the, the rest of the movie, that's kind of his arc is to be more secure with himself and to not lie, you know, and yep. tell the truth. Tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, uh, we, we set all that up. We see Princess Jasmine. She's, uh, as you said, Brianna, uh, 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 independent. Uh, she she's like, hey, I don't need no man, especially that kind of guy. He's not <laughs> cool. Uh, he he has a, a, a heart shaped underwear. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> How do we feel about just like you know? Obviously, it was a different time, but like all these voices are from white people. So how do we feel about yeah. that? I wish I wish it would have been more inclusive, but I don't want to 
say the performances weren't good because I really do love Jasmine's voice. And uh, uh, I kind of wouldn't want to... I love her texture and everything, but at the same time, I do wish they were more inclusive. And they even put a little bit of... When you watch this on Disney Plus now, they put a disclaimer at the beginning of the movie to let you know that, oh, there are some stereotypes in this movie that are not okay. Not okay then, not okay now, which I do appreciate, you know? Yeah, me too. I mean, I, it's kind of a gray area because, yeah, I wouldn't... Because yeah. I like the performances, so it's not like it's, like, disingenuous in that way. Mm -hmm. But it's also like, yeah, like, if we did this movie... I mean, we did this movie again. <laughs> but you know what I mean. But <laughs> it, it, <laughs> But it's like, yeah, it's like, it's a little weird that, like, you know, that one of the first ever... Disney movies to like, you know, just like have a story about people of color and they're all voiced by white people. Yeah. I mean, they, they were very inclusive in the remake. That's true. But, mm -hmm. You know, uh, Hunter, what, how do you feel about that? Yeah. I mean, I, I feel the same way. I, I find some disclaimers to be kind of funny just only because like, oh, we're sorry, <laughs> but he's the movie anyway. <laughs> no, Basically. I mean, it's just like, yeah, we fucking know Disney, okay? Like, <laughs> Yeah, we we, uh, we all know about Song of the South, Disney. <laughs> yeah, so shut the fuck up. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's it's a shame that they that they weren't more inclusive. Um, but also, again, uh, Brianna, like you said, like don't want to knock the performances that were given because they are good. Yeah. yeah. So I'd, I'd have to agree. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, Disney keeps doing this. Like, every movie, every animated movie, like, hey, we'll do better next time. <laughs> <laughs> like, Moana was, like, pretty perfect, but, like, it was directed by white people. So, like, you know, it's, like, it's the same directors, by the way, of Aladdin and Little Mermaid. Oh. Um, but, like, you know, it's a, I, I really like Moana, but it's also, like, yeah, maybe, you know, more, more people behind the scenes that right. reflect the the people in the movie but once again it's a gray area just wanted to mention it just because i thought it was interesting yeah. yeah of course yeah yeah uh so yeah uh where where are we in the movie what are, where did i leave off uh uh sad song i'm not good enough for jasmine anyone and <laughs> jasmine uh escapes and she's uh in the marketplace everyone's flirting with her uh, guys, stop! It's it. It's just stop, guys. Um, <laughs> yeah, if you if you flirt with a girl and you go fresh fish, <laughs> that's 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 arm cut off and then Aladdin's like you know being clever he's yeah. a clever guy and so you know he's like oh it's my sister she's crazy and so they escape they they uh sh she goes back to his place um and uh, <laughs> oh my god <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh and so they connect and uh well, how do we feel about just like the relationship of Jasmine and Aladdin they both want the same thing and it's beautiful <laughs> That's nice. That's right, each other. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, freedom. Definitely moves quickly. They're like sitting there looking at the palace and then they're like about to make out. Let's make out. And I'm like, well, <laughs> hang on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's always been kind of the issue of uh, basically uh, up until basically this point, you know, every Disney movie is like kind of like two days, you get married. I mean, she says it in Frozen. Can't marry a guy you just met. It's like the first time they address that. Yeah. Also in Enchanted. Enchanted also oh, and, addressed yeah. that. We, uh, right. Amy Adams, underrated movie. It is underrated. <laughs> we love we love Enchanted here at NYC. Okay. Just talk yes, about it. Yes, we do. <laughs> Come on. Uh, 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 what's his face? Is the prince in that movie? Uh, James, James Marsden. Marsden. James Marsden. Iconic. Giselle. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. So good. Yeah. But saying uh, that, yeah. how do you, how do you make, like, if it's a movie about like two people meeting and falling in love, how do you do that in an hour thirty? Yeah, I guess. Well, I I think way. I think it's pretty perfect. I mean, I I I really wouldn't change all that much. I think it's well timed and well earned for for a romance that's like a couple of days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. I do like that moment, though. The whole do you trust me thing. Yeah. And it, and it pays off later in the movie. It's it's. I think it's really good. Yeah. Yeah. It pays off so good. Yeah. <laughs> that moment's like, oh, man. So powerful. Yeah. So they get caught. Uh, almost kissing, but not yet. Not quite yet. That's for later. <laughs> but but yeah. So uh, they cut. They get caught by Jim Cummings. The uh, uh, Aladdin is uh, imprisoned. Jasmine's like Jafar. Fuck you. And uh, and uh, she cries. Uh, rightfully so, I think. And Jafar does, is just being an evil guy. She does the Disney princess um, sob by a fountain. She le- leans on her arms and goes, oh, how could you? And cries on the fountain. I mean, classic Disney. Classic. Every princess <laughs> has got to do that. Got to do your crying moment. Yeah, you're yeah. actually not a princess yet until you until cry. You cry. <laughs> until you fountain. cry. <laughs> you cry. Like that. <laughs> but yeah, so Jafar's, you know, he's like, okay, I found the diamond in the rough. It's this. Tom Cruise looking guy. <laughs> Wait, uh, isn't the face after Tom Cruise? Isn't yes. It? Yes. That's so fucking awesome. Yeah. What? They were like, we got to make Aladdin look good. Who, who are we basing him on? Tom Cruise. And then his pants were based on MC Hammer. <laughs> oh, great. I'm not joking. Great references. I know you're not. <laughs> it's a little it's too strange reference. to make up. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's very weird. <laughs> I didn't hey, know that. Hey, everybody, who looks good? Tom Cruise looks mm. good. Who's got the best pants? <laughs> MC Hammer. MC yeah. Hammer. Yeah. Uh, so uh, they're about to execute him, and Jafar's like, "Execute the boy," but not really. I got a plan. So he dresses up as an old guy, a uh, really creepy old guy. Again, right? I had no idea what was going on as a kid. I just thought that was some creepy old guy. I, they never, or maybe I was just a kid who didn't pay attention as much as I should have. But <laughs> Who's this old guy? I was like, who is this old guy and why do I care? <laughs> <laughs> why do I care about this guy? <laughs> but then Iago like pops out like, I'm dying in here. <laughs> yeah. No. Again, a really good impression. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Please keep him coming. <laughs> But yeah, uh, so you know they make a deal. Hey, come with me. Uh, get this lamp for me. I'll I'll uh, I'll help you out. So they go back to the cave of wonders, um, and he's worthy. Aladdin enters. He's you know they can't touch anything. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> but uh, Abu is 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 very tempted. If we don't mention the carpet, I'm gonna be sad. Rugman. Come on. Rug man, oh, yeah, rug yo man. yo. Give me some tassel. <laughs> Give me some tassel. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, so we, we we get introduced to the magic carpet, and I I don't know if I mentioned this yet, but like you know, the this was one of the very first Disney movies to implement CGI, and and one of the yeah. prime examples of that is obviously the magic carpet, and I think once again, you know, uh, it works. Like it still looks good. Oh, yeah. I love the carpet. And what's so funny about it is he, or I don't know what gender the carpet has. Carpet. Um, fluid. He's fluid. Does, he's fluid. He, they don't say anything, but he speaks a million words to be cheesy. But, like, the carpet has such a funny little personality and there's no, <laughs> he doesn't have a voice. Yeah, no, it's it's kind of brilliant. I mean, it just goes to show that. You know, the animators were just so good at, like, making something out of nothing. Inanimate yeah. objects are all of a sudden really heartwarming. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, that, you know, and, and, and you know, eventually later on we get the Toy Story. You know, like, it, it's yeah. kind of like, you know, almost the beginning of all that. Yeah, it's, it's – because doesn't the, the carpet get stuck under something at some point, doesn't it? It has to be saved. And you're like, mm-hmm. oh, crap, go – Go save the fucking carpet. <laughs> save him. Save the carpet. And it's we- it's weird. I don't I don't like having feelings toward a carpet, but but you do. I love the carpet. <laughs> I've honestly, after Genie, my favorite character is the carpet. I'm Ooh. not even joking. I love the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big statement. Brianna's not joking, guys. <laughs> the carpet's so cute. We got a carpet stand here. <laughs> carpet stand. <laughs> but oh I, I I'm curious then Hunter who who would be like your second favorite character? 
Who, me? I'm assuming Genie's number one. Uh, yeah, I mean, obvi- obviously, yeah. it's hard yeah. not to have the, the Genie's number one. Um, I like the Sultan, but I don't know if he'd be my second. Praise this just... Allah! Yeah, he's, he's cute. He's, he's cute. He's, running, he's, he's running a doofus, around. but he's cute. Yeah, he's just, he's running around kind of being fucking stupid. He's a dumbass. <laughs> I like that. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's probably, it's probably Aladdin. Or, or, uh, Abu. But I don't know, it's hard. All the characters are so good. What about you, Nick? Uh, I have to give it actually to my boy Iago. I think he, uh, like, especially rewatching this time, he's he's really fucking funny too. Yeah, <laughs> he is. Like, he's so funny. He has these, and we'll get into it later, but he has all these great lines too. Like, if, if Genie wasn't in the movie, like, he would be the funniest character, I think. And it's, it's Gilbert Gottfried, right? Right, that's right. Yeah. I Iconic. Mean, yeah. Iconic, actually iconic. Yeah, because he's just—he's just—he's kind of just being himself, but like it's perfect because he's like this parrot, and and it's just like I don't know, like like Jafar is so like you know reserved and 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 cold, and so then this parrot pops up like you know from out of his shoulder or whatever, and he's he's just like ah, what's going on, Allah, you know. <laughs> I'm so annoyed. Oh, the sand in my ears. Oh. Oh, my God. Gilbert Godfrey is joint in the Zoom. Sorry, Brianna. Uh, we got a new guest star. Yeah, I'll Gilbert make Godfrey. way for Gilbert Godfrey. Yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but, iconic. yeah, so iconic, iconic. Oh, uh, yeah. And also, apparently, in, in the writer's room, uh, the characters were supposed to be switched. So uh, uh, Jafar was supposed to be this kind of like fucking buffoon, and then like uh, 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 the parrot. What's his name? Iago. Iago, yeah. get it right. Iago <laughs> uh, uh, was supposed to be this like British, like oh god, type oh. character. But and I'm so happy they switched that because I, I feel like that like has been done before, like the buffoon type villain and like the animal that's like ah oh, what a fucking idiot yeah and let's talk about jafar for a second because yeah i i think he's one of the best disney villains because of that because he's he's so you know like droll and you know he has these line deliveries like this and and but but also by the end he he goes absolutely crazy and you and you feel it it's like oh my god he's he's insane and he has like the best laugh yeah i think he's a pretty scary uh disney villain also, because his whole thing is mind control, how he's always controlling the mind of uh, the sultan, and he really wants to push people around in, in a really creepy and oppressive way. Uh, so that's that's like an actual pretty pretty scary villain. If yeah, he's a like, you know he's a he's a manipulator. Yeah, and it's pretty realistic and freaky. I mean, realistic, uh, not because you know he's. Using magic to put my control. Well, because guys like him exist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, <laughs> that's why it's scary. Yeah, like that's a real thing. <laughs> I mean, I wish you know parrots like Iago existed, but I you know. know. Oh God. Voiced by Gilbert Godfrey, but uh, well. I mean, I kind of like that they're friends. Yeah, like, they that... have a good. I was gonna say romance. They have a good friendship. <laughs> yeah, I mean they they have that moment when they're. He's Iago saying, we got to pack up. We got to leave. And then he takes out a picture and he says, I have to pack. What about this picture? I don't know. I think I'm making a weird face. I'm like, what? They got a portrait taken together. <laughs> 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 like, how cute. I'm so glad you mentioned that. I was losing it during that part. And actually, it's funny. Robin Williams lost it, too, when he first saw that joke oh. or that that part in the movie. Like, he was like, he was just lost it. Because it's so funny. Because, like, he just takes out a picture in, like, Arabian times. <laughs> and it's like, what about this picture? And they look weird in it. What is it? <laughs> And it's just like, what? <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you mentioned that. Uh, um, but yeah, so um, Aladdin finds the lamp, but Abu's being a, a basic bitch. He stole the, the, the jewel, and so now they gotta run in this CGI sequence that also kind of holds up. Like, it still looks good. I, I don't know why it still looks good, because some movies don't look good, like, at this point. Like, a 90s movie would... Like, it would look dated at this point, but it still looks good. I don't know why, but it just does. 
Yeah, I, I, the style or I don't know what it is, but it, it does look amazing. And I don't know why when they're when they're running and like the sand is falling or whatever, it always reminds me of like melting cheese for some reason. I don't know. Doesn't it look like that a little bit? Or I don't know. But look, I kind of you- wanted to uh, eat the lava. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I know what you mean. Right? Get some yeah. nacho chips, dip it in the lava. <laughs> <laughs> Looks spicy. You- I can handle it. <laughs> Looks spicy. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> There's a great, um, you know, when they're escape, trying to escape the cave of wonders, and they're on the carpet. There's this <laughs> moment that I have to mention because my sister and I, I guess we were just kind of young. You know, when you watch a movie when you're younger, and you say, "Oh, that's what was happening." When you rewatch it as an adult. Yeah. Well, when they're flying through the cave of wonders. My sister thought that they went into outer space and she was like, oh, that part when they transcend space and time. And I said, what? (laughs) What are you talking about? And she's like, when they're on the carpet. And I was like, they're in the cave of wonders, Gabby, like (laughs) space and time. (laughs) I think it's because it's purpley and like yellow and purples (laughs) clashing on screen. And it kind of looks like they're really going through like a portal, but. No, it's all the Cave of Wonders. Yeah, it's 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 all the Cave of Wonders. Yeah. But that could totally work. If that did happen, <laughs> it could work. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out, okay? Aladdin in space. <laughs> that sounds good. You're saying I wish good. I wish that was the straight to video sequel. Oh, yeah, the straight to video sequel. And we'll we'll get to those later. Okay. I I, I want to know what you guys think of those. Um, <laughs> so uh, so uh, 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 they escape. Aladdin's like, "Give me your hand. Uh, I'm about to fall." And uh, Jafar is like, "Psych, I'm Jafar." And uh, <laughs> and uh, and then and then uh, he lets him go. And Abu steals the lamp. Uh, they're so they're in the the you know the 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 cave you know it's messed up it's just rocks now and uh, and he's like oh Abu you got the lamp rubs the lamp we got genie baby genie baby finally <laughs> yeah da uh, and and in, in that moment we mentioned before you know just like brilliant and so yeah what's so cool that I you know, always knew, but I was, but now that we're really getting to know Robin Williams, uh, it's like, oh, it's just perfect. Like, you know, from his little tail, he takes out a mic and he's like, it's so great to be out of there. <laughs> and he, and he starts doing like, he's kind of a stand up thing. And he's like, mm-hmm. Hey, can I call you Al or maybe Din or maybe, you know, it's just like, <laughs> or maybe <it's>, Lottie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's just, it's just kind of perfect. And, and, and he jumps from all these impressions that as a kid, obviously I had no idea like the impressions he was doing. They were just funny. And that's why it still works to this day in 2021. They're just funny, you know what I mean? Like, like a kid's not gonna be like, Haha, "That's Groucho Marx." No one, no kid saying that. But like, but it doesn't matter because it, like, the way he just like, it's just such a perfect impression. Like, you're gonna laugh anyway. For the parents too, like parents who are watching of the kids, like this is definitely a, a performance that is, you know, would keep like parents' attention. I feel like. And yeah, and I think that's why it was so popular too, because yeah. like adults liked them watching it too. And Robin Williams was really hot at the time. Yes. And he was kind of like the first time a celebrity was really getting into like Disney voices. Because for the most part, they were kind of just uh, voice actors (laughs) who weren't, you know, big, big celebrities. So he kind of ushered in this new generation of celebrities doing voices. I'm so glad you mentioned that uh, because yes, this is this is basically the beginning of all that. Like, you know, now now we have you know, like Shrek and all these like celebrity voices, uh, you know, uh, Jerry Seinfeld as the bee, you know, it, it's, it's just all these examples of like, you know, we wouldn't have had, we wouldn't have had any of that for better or worse, uh, because of, of, uh, casting Robin Williams in this role. And, and, uh, I, what I think some of these other movies later on fail, uh, it, you know, where they fail because like, they just get the celebrity to get it get the celebrity you know what i mean like yeah. like they just kind of like okay what's a big name right now we'll get that person while this one it's like like it's like robin williams is the character you know what i mean like he's not 
I mean, he's, in a lot of ways, he's Robin Williams. But, like, when I think of the genie, I don't actually immediately think of Robin Williams. Oh. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not yeah. like, oh, it's Robin Williams as the genie. It's more like, it's the genie. And now that we've gone through a lot of his movies, now I'm like, oh, I can see where, like, you know, they, mm -hmm. this uh, performance kind of plays to his strengths. But, like, yeah, it's like... I, when I think of, like, Jerry Seinfeld as the bee, I think, oh, it's Jerry Seinfeld as the bee. You know, it's just, like, that's it. Like, you like jazz? Like, that's it. You like jazz? It's just, that's it. You like jazz. Yeah. And, like, something, uh, Brana, since you're a voice actress, I, I am interested to see what you think. Because, like, yeah, like, he ushered in this new thing, but then now you have, like, Justin Timberlake and Trolls or something like that. You know what I mean? And it's like, what, what do you think? I don't know where the question is, but what do you think about? Yeah, how do you, how do you feel about that? Yeah, yeah like, like I mean, voice like, actors not getting the yeah. roles that they probably should. There's like a kind of like a thin line. I, I love some of iconic people, you know, like Jeannie and who else? And like, I actually really kind of like... Um, the Rock is Maui. Like, I, I kind of dig Maui. Yeah. And his delivery of it. And... Yeah, I think I think he works in that movie, yeah. Yeah, but then there's also, uh, I kind of feel like sometimes certain characters and certain princesses maybe don't have to always be a celebrity. And they do that sometimes. Like Moana, they just got, they found this girl. That's really cool. So there's kind of a thin line. And then it's also like, I'm not... Tara Strong or <laughs> those people who are like not yet like, oh one day <laughs> one day uh, who are like seasoned voice actors so it's definitely uh, voice acting is kind of a little secret that I feel like a lot of celebrities have discovered and now it's like oh well I'm Justin Timberlake and I'm in Trolls or I'm Cameron Diaz and I'm in Trek or for a lot of times if you're not as iconic as someone as I don't know Robin Williams it just kind of sounds like you said like Cameron Diaz as Fiona or Will Smith as Jeannie it's just not Jeannie it's just Will Smith to me you know what I mean not that it's bad I really like Will Smith I love Will Smith yeah I think we all like Will Smith right honey? yeah right no, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all like Will Smith, but it, he didn't... I mean, like, it just doesn't work in the same way. I wouldn't, like, compare it. I would just say that it's Will Smith's genie, not... Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to compare it. He's not... Like, thank God he didn't do, like, a Robin Williams impression. Yeah, I know? wouldn't have liked that at all. That would have been so <laughs> awkward. Yeah, and, like, bad. And not that there's even a right person, because there's not, but the absolute wrong person to do, like, a Robin Williams impression would be Will Smith. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we're introduced to Robin Williams, Friend Like Me, amazing song, animated to perfection. It, it Honestly, the it's still in my head to this day. <laughs> like, just like the imagery, how he sings it, and, and just the whole movie, too. Just like, like the way he says things, like it's just ingrained into my brain. Like, I, I say it now before he says it, because I know exactly how he says it. It's it's crazy. I love when he gives um, Aladdin the rules. A couple of quid pro quos. And then he's like, I can't bring people back from the dead. It's not a pretty picture. I don't like doing it. I love that part. <laughs> it's true. And that's like an actor. Like, that's that's a whole bit. Peter Laurie, I think. Like, it, it's just like these yeah. old references that, like, doesn't matter because it's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, there's so many pop culture references today that, like, the, like, so many movies try to replicate the genie, even Disney itself tries to do that a lot um because like after this they had uh like timon and pumbaa we like timon and pumbaa right uh, but oh, but like no. it's it's kind of like the same kind of vibe um uh but like you know we got the gargoyles in hunchback eh, you know it's like eh, like it's a little like it's it's this serious story and then we have these gargoyles that are like got the cheese <laughs> and it's like uh, maybe not maybe cut that out <laughs> so it, it became such a huge like oh we have to have a huge celebrity do this comic relief or villainous character like james woods uh god rest his soul <laughs> it's like uh he's dead to me anyway um but uh but as, as hades you know uh, <laughs> like it, it's, it's the same thing i love hades but like you know it's like it's the same kind of vibe they kept doing it so much that it was like it was a bit of like 
it was just so repetitive after a while. I mean, how do you top the genie and as you know, Rum Williams as genie? Like, how do you top that? Well, the, you don't, and you, and yeah. you, instead you just like you naturally have a celebrity voice a character like Maui, like you mentioned. Yeah. Although, um, a fun fact, I always thought that uh, Hades was voiced by Billy Crystal. <laughs> <laughs> I think I heard yeah. somebody say it, and I was like, oh, that, that is Billy Crystal. And then one day I went, what? It's James Woods. <laughs> they escape the cave. He tricks the genie into uh, escaping without uh, Aladdin having to make a wish. The genie is explaining, like, you know, I, I'm trapped. I, I can't, you know, I, I can only serve... Um, I, my want, my wish is to be free and in a, especially now, like, so, uh, it, it teared, I, I teared up during that moment. I don't know about you guys. Yeah. When he says freedom, freedom, another character who wants to be free. Mm-hmm. Freedom. That's the theme, baby. Yeah. <laughs> freedom, baby. Come on now. <laughs> But yeah, like the way he's like, just like his line delivery. And once again, Robin, like, so clearly, like with every character, like every single character he did, like also has pathos. They're not just funny, you know, they, they also like have desires too. they're not just one note, you know. And so it's just like, you know, uh, you know, when he floats up and it's just like, you know, I would and all the world. And it, like, I'm just like, Ugh! you know, it's just like, it's, it's perfect. And, and, uh, and so Aladdin's like, I'll free you. I'll do it. And he's like, okay, we got a deal. And, and so like in this wonderful scene, he's, you know, his first wish is I want to be a prince and this wonderful, like fabulous. Oh, let's see here. Oh, yes. Oh, oh wow. What, what is this screaming beggar? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> and, and it's just like, and it's just all these great jokes. And then he's like this, uh, uh, this host, this TV host where he's like, uh, you know, we're gonna turn this a monkey into an elephant. Oh, 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 no, wait, maybe this, and then a car, and then, oh, watch out, they spit, it's a camel. And so it's just like, it's just like, oh, it's just like awe-inspiring, like how many jokes he can make in like a second. Yeah, he's so on, like, all the time, and his mind just works so fast, to the point where it's like, oh, I can't even laugh at every joke that you're making. There was a few jokes when I rewatched it uh, recently that I didn't like pick up on like that's how good and how fast all of his great jokes are yeah and, mm. and like like sebastian shows up from little mermaid at one point <laughs> like and there's like the 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 arm that pops up in the book and he's like Eat oh! you know and it's like it's just like all these little things like he must have just not only he must have had a, a blast doing this but like the the directors and everyone you know there must have just been they must have just been losing it. Like it was just so. It's just oh, yeah. so funny. Have yeah. Have you guys seen the behind the scenes footage where they show some of the impressions that got cut? That yes. Didn't make it in? I I actually just recently watched those. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he had so many more. There was like, uh, let me think. He did like Elvis, uh, like Nixon. Uh, uh, Marlon Brando. Brando. Marlon it's Brando. really funny. He's like. <laughs> really good. <laughs> the fire is a delivery boy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, it's, it's, <laughs> there was so, like, even the outtakes, the stuff that they didn't put in is hilarious. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, they they make a deal. Uh, it's Prince Ali time. The song's amazing. Uh, maybe maybe the best song in the in the movie. I don't know, but it's so like, and when it builds up at the end, Prince Ali, it's just perfect. Um, and and it's just like just like all the rest of the kind of Disney sidekick comedic characters. Like you know, he's helping the main character get what he wants. In a kind of selfless way, like kind of like Sebastian does with "Kiss the Girl" and everything like that. Like there's yeah. like the it's a it's a trope, but it, it's a trope that really works. And so yeah, we see that all play out. He's you know genie. Oh, and there's so many. Oh, I'm gonna just be gushing the whole time. But like you know, uh, and there, there's like the newscaster bit. You know, with the peacocks. <laughs> like oh, I love the feathers. <laughs> yeah, like the New Year's Eve type stuff. It's so yeah, fun. like the floats, and you yeah. can kind of tell it's like genie's like having a ball doing this it just looks like he's having like a ton of fun yeah and he and he, once again he's changing to all these different human characters now yeah. it's just yeah. like yeah it's just so good 
ten thousand bad guys with swords. Yes, that was, <laughs> I was just about to say that. That's the best one. <laughs> uh, doesn't Aladdin go to visit her in her room, but he's on the carpet. Uh, he's he's like trying to play cool. He's he's you know genie's helping him out, but he's also genie also genie is is he's playing chess with the carpet. <laughs> I love that moment. I can't believe it. I'm losing to a rug. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rodney Dangerfield. Uh, once again, a reference. Yeah. I had no idea that was a reference to him, but like, it's it's so funny anyway. So funny. Yeah. I literally, while watching it this time, it was the first time I picked up on it. I was like, pretty sure that's fucking Rodney Dangerfield right now. Yeah, just look at the eyes, the pupils. Yeah. yeah. yeah right? The eyes got me, and I They're was like, really oh my big. God. Yeah. The, the neck collar thing. And then brilliantly just kind of slinks into Jack Nicholson. Okay, Sparky, Sparky. here's the deal. (laughs) And it's just perfect. And and it's like animated just like, you know, like his likeness. It's just like, (laughs) do you got it? And (laughs) it's just, uh, yeah, tell her the truth. And so, yeah, like all jokes aside, Al, let's, you know, be yourself. And he's like, no, I can't be myself. Uh, She would, you know, she would, uh, she wouldn't like me, Aladdin. She wouldn't like Aladdin. And he says, how do I look? And Jeannie's just like, like a prince. And he goes and tries to woo her. And this brilliant, like, kind of sequence where he's a bee. The genie's a bee. Uh, there's so many versions of genie in this movie. It's kind of an insane <laughs> bee yourself. <laughs> Tell her she's beautiful. Nice. Punctual. Punctual. What? Sorry. He says sorry about it. <laughs> Uh, and so um it doesn't go well at first and then hey i got this carpet do you trust me yes and then a whole new world happens love it which is a beautiful fucking song yeah like and i i found myself like i was singing along to it like i couldn't help myself it was so it's so good like that yeah yeah it's just a it's iconic it's it's an earworm like literally when like the the first song i was like humming after the movie was was a whole new world and it's one of the best kind of duets of all of disney you know it's just like so powerful and once again with not a lot of screen time you buy the relationship of aladdin and jasmine Mm -hmm. well i mean they they literally travel the world together (laughs) yeah so jasmine's like Wait a minute. Did you just say Abu the monkey, the iconic monkey? Um, uh, you're you're the street rat, and he's like, no, I'm not. Okay, well, I was, but like, you know, I I was. It was a disguise. I'm really this guy. I'm really Prince Al, L- Ali Ababwa. I was just pretend. <laughs> what a weird thing to pretend about. <laughs> I know it's a bad lie. And she only um, bought it because she was doing something a little similar. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, and it's funny too, like an animation thing. Apparently every time he lies, like his feather like goes down. Oh. Yeah. So that's like, a, I guess, a hint if for some reason you're thinking, is he telling the truth? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so basically he lies and she's like, okay, I trust you. They hug and he's like, I don't know. And then uh, he goes they go back. It's a nice date. Uh, uh, he, it seems like he almost climaxes after that date. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's literally like, "Oh yes." Oh um, <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and then the guards, Jim Cummings and the boys, they 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 trap oh him. Uh, <laughs> Cummings and the boys. Jim Cummings the boys. and the boys. <laughs> uh, they they you know Jafar is like, "Yo, get him!" And then and they take him and they drown him. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty scary. Dude, I w- I did not remember that part. I was like, are they they're really going to kill this motherfucker right now? <laughs> I was like 5 watching this movie. They're like they and out just crazy. Just Is crazy. Aladdin going to make it out okay? <laughs> uh, literally. Main character? They're going to kill the main character? Are you serious? Genie's movie now, baby. It's Genie's <laughs> movie. Movie, baby. And then Genie has to ruin it for himself mm-hmm. and save that guy. Right, because that's technically the second wish. I never actually picked that up until now. Yeah. Yeah, he saves him. Yeah, kind of because he wants to, but also, like, I guess that counts as a second wish. He turns into a U-boat, 
Uh, he's, he's speaking German or whatever, he, and, and he and uh, for some reason, like the underwater looks like outer space. Like you were uh, mentioning before, Hunter about oh no 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 Bri- uh, Brianna you were you were mentioning before about <laughs> outer space. Know. That underwater scene looks like outer space. Okay, are they just like time traveling in this movie? Through space and time. <laughs> Let's throw out a little bit of a conspiracy theory. You know how people say uh, like all the Disney movies are connected. Like, oh, the, the ship that crashed was the ship from this movie, and but, 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 you know? It's not real, but, you know, whatever. It's not canon. It's all connected through space. <laughs> space and time. Yeah, so uh, your, your sister was right. <laughs> Gotta tell her. Yeah. Yeah, Debbie, you were yeah right. <laughs> we, I, we, we both confirmed that your sister was indeed right. She's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> It's in space. But yeah, so they, they go up and and the Aladdin's like, you saved my life. They embrace in, in another like, oh, warm mm-hmm. moment. And uh, and uh, yeah, let's talk. Uh, I don't know if you guys know about this, but I what I found really fascinating about the behind the scenes of, uh, of the movie when it comes to Robin Williams uh, and his recording. Yeah, as you mentioned, Hunter, like 16 hours, a lot of stuff, really fun. Uh, and Disney, you know, I mentioned before, like, you know, th- this is why he he kind of, like, was sold and was like, I'll do it. And then he ha- kind of had a deal with Disney, like, okay, I'll, I'll get SAG rate, which at the time, I don't know if it still is, but, like, at the time was like, oh, you know, for especially for someone like Robin, was only, like, $70,000, something like that. And, and so, it, it, in other words, not a lot, considering... And so he was like, you know, I'm fine with that. I just want to make an animated movie for my kids, you know, just to be part of the animation, Disney animation history. There's only one thing. I don't want you guys to use my likeness for the merchandise, for the uh, for the trailers. You know, I don't want to be, you know, uh, on toys or selling toys. You know, he was very against that. He was like, I'm just doing this because I want to, not because... I want you guys to use my likeness for something that I don't want you guys to do. And Disney was like, okay. They shake on it. And then uh, a a poster and a trailer later, they were like, nah, let's just put Robin Williams all over these uh, uh, posters and trailers and everything. And so Robin was crushed. Obviously, they made a deal. And Disney was like, no, we're actually just going to do it our way. Whatever. Whatever. You're, uh, be, be grateful you're in a Disney movie. And so Robin, you know, was was just like, okay, well, I'm not promoting in this movie. Um, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not, you know, that's it. Like, I'm not going to, like, you know, like, be involved in any way. And now let's talk about the Disney straight-to-DVD sequels, where at least in the second Aladdin movie, uh, what was it, Re- Return of Jafar, um... Robin Williams isn't in that movie. Uh, Dan Castellaneta voices the genie, who is uh, most known, obviously, for Homer Simpson. Uh, So, you know, he voices the genie. You know, it's, you know, I love Dan, you know, and his voices and everything. But, like, it's it's basically knockoff genie. You know, he's trying his best, but it's like, you know, it's obviously just not the same. It's not a very good movie. You don't have to watch it. It's, you know, Jafar comes back. I don't know. Remember when, like, Disney sequels were weird and janky and straight to uh, DVD? Yeah, straight to DVD. This was, like, the first, like, (laughs) straight to video. Like, I think this was, like, the very first one, Aladdin 2, where they were like, all right, like, it's a sequel, but you watch it at home. Which, you know, right now it's like, sure, I'll watch a movie at home. Yeah. The animation (laughs) quality's not as good, but you like Aladdin, so stick with it? Question mark? Exactly. But I mean, like, then now you have Frozen 2, which is like an entire new cinematic freaking universe. And if it was like the 90s, you would have had, someone said this on TikTok or something. They were like, if this was the 90s, you would have had Frozen 2 and Olaf's voice would have been weird. Yeah, it would have been voiced by, like, me. Someone else. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been Nick Mana is Olaf. Olaf. <laughs> so, he, yeah, Bad Blood, Bad... F- Bad blood with Disney for a while. Um, and so, yeah, he, he saw it as a breach of contract. So he was just like, yeah, I, I'm not doing the sequels. I'm out, right? And so 
uh, initially Jeffrey Katzenberg, who was like the main kind of Disney head at the time. Basically, all you need to know is evil businessman, evil Disney businessman. But basically, he's kind of the, the, one of the main reasons. Like they kind of like were like, okay, well, let's just use Robin Williams anyway. Money, um, and so Robin. Uh, uh, well, they they uh, they at first try to apologize in their own way, where Jeffrey Katzenberg, you know, didn't make a, a statement or no official apology, but but he he gave Robin Williams a Picasso painting as like a as like a apology, and, and Robin was like, okay, an actual <laughs> Picasso painting, yeah, which is worth like. Or at least that painting was worth like a million dollars or something, which yeah. I guess was supposed to be like that was supposed to like, you know, are we good now, Robin? But it's like it wasn't about the money. Like, as I as as you know, as we right. as I already stated, like he wanted to do this not because of the money per se, you know, Robin got a award, I think the year after uh, in the Golden Globes, because I think he was nominated for a Golden Globe for this performance. Uh, but he didn't win, obviously. You know Siskel and Ebert, the 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 critics, the old critics. Yeah, yeah, Roger yeah. Ebert. Yeah, uh, Siskel, I think, like was really pushing, like, hey, Robin Williams should get an Oscar nomination for this performance. He didn't, obviously, but with the benefit of hindsight, yeah, he should have got a nomination because he's that good in the movie. Yeah. Um, but the, but there's such a stigma about like nominating like an animated movie for for awards like that what, how do you feel about that brianna uh i think animated movies deserve a, like a ton of recognition just because there's so much work that goes into it behind the scenes and i think uh voice acting is it's on it's so fun i love doing it um but it can be challenging because you're creating your own environment and you're using only your imagination and your voice. And we're lucky that Robin Williams just was like amazing at that, amazing at like using his creativity and his talent to totally create like 60 characters in one character. That's really hard. And I feel like it deserves recognition. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they they are recognized a little bit like daytime Emmys and stuff, but you know, right? Those aren't even televised. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so I, what I was gonna say was Golden Globes. He got an award one year later for like just like this weird like special achievement, like kind of like even he would say he would say if he was still with us, like just this bullshit kind of like here we'll give you something. It's not an actual award, but thank you anyway. Thank you. It's um, uh, accepting, since it was only a voice, accepting for Mr. Williams will be Mother Teresa. It is very wonderful for him. Mother Teresa, is there anything you want? I want to direct. Okay. It's, uh, this is, I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> Slip it under the door. <laughs> Federal Express. I have some people I want to thank. I'd like to thank Jeffrey Katzenbug. Uh, Je Jeffrey Katzenberg, or as Robin said, Jeffrey Katzenbug, um, mm -hmm. was uh, replaced by someone named Joe Roth. Then finally, an official apology was issued. Uh, so, uh, and, I'll, and I'll quote it here. Uh, Robin complained that we took advantage of his performance as the genie in the film, exploiting him to promote some other businesses inside the company. End quote. Uh, new quote. Uh, we had a specific understanding with Robin that we wouldn't do that. Nevertheless, we did that. We apologized for it. And so at that point, uh, uh, Robin accepted the apology and voiced the genie in the third straight-to-DVD uh, um, a movie, uh, King of Thieves. Wow. So that's the story. It's an interesting story. I didn't know the whole story. Yeah, and, it's, and, and, he's, uh, and he voiced the genie not only in that movie, but, like, you know, I think the deal after that was, like, okay, I'll, I'll keep voicing the genie in, like, educational stuff for children. So, like, you know, oh, nice. there's, like, Aladdin... CD ROM, you know, like games for children where he voices the genie. So, yeah, it's, I think it's a fascinating story. I really like when he talked about his kids, like recognizing his voice. Yeah. Because I was wondering for a minute if, like, part of him wanted to keep the magic of the genie, like, kind of alive for his kids. Because sometimes when you know a certain voice of someone, it kind of, like, kills that magic sometimes. 
like uh, for me, a lot of kids have no idea what I'm talking about when I'm like, well, I'm a mermaid. And they're like, mermaids swim in the ocean. You obviously can't breathe underwater. And Where's your fin? Exactly. <laughs> Where's your pink hair then? And I'm like, oh, well, I don't, I don't want to ruin the magic for you. So I'm wondering if that's part of it for his kids. Yeah, I mean, it seems like from the very beginning, like he was doing it for his kids, you know, yeah. like, he, you know, because he would voice all these other things like Fern Gully at the time. And like he was he was juggling, I think, Hook and something else during the, the recording sessions. Yeah. And so, yeah, as you said, Brianna, like, yeah, he was hot stuff at the time. So, yeah, like it. Yeah, it's, it, it just shows that, like, you know, he definitely wasn't in the wrong in that situation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but it, but it all worked out. It all yeah. worked out. Uh, so yeah, uh, where, where where were we in this movie? And Jasmine's like, I want to marry this boy toy, and uh, and then <laughs> and Tom Cruise. I want to marry Tom Cruise. <laughs> and then um and so Sultan's like, sure. And so Aladdin and Genie are like, oh, and some really funny stuff again, where like Genie's like reading the script, <laughs> and he's like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Aladdin's still like very defensive and he's like, no, I will not tell the truth. I have to keep this going. I can't set you free, Genie. I'm sorry. And Genie's like, all right, well, you've been lying to everyone else. I guess I, f I you know, I felt a little left out. So, yeah. so he leaves. Iago stole the, the lamp in a great scene where he's mimicking Jafar. So he's like, on a scale of one to 10, you oh. are 11. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, so Jafar has, Jafar has the lamp. I, we didn't even mention it. There's this there, there's this running joke in the movie with Iago and crackers, right? And so oh, yeah. the Sultan keeps giving him cracker, and he's like, "Stop!" And and so uh, now the payoff is when when they go back to Agrabah, Iago is is giving is giving the Sultan crackers, and he's just forcing the crackers into his mouth. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's one of the funniest moments in the movie. So oh, good. <sighs> Yeah, a lot of the payoffs in this movie are just like fucking gold. Yeah. Uh, Jafar finds Aladdin. Uh, they fight. He turns to a snake. A sexy snake? <laughs> oh my God. Sexy snake? Anybody? Sex? But, I mean, but, but well, he has a. Jafar has. <laughs> Jafar has all these, you know, jokes. He's he's funny now. He like he has like we're just getting warmed up, <sighs> fire, Ooh, and like honey. and he's a comedian now. He's trying to upstage uh, <laughs> uh, the genie. Honestly, to me, it seems like he's uh he's like slipping. He's, yeah, like really going crazy. Yeah, a, a like slip, he's... slip, slip, slipping like a snake. Oh, a slippery snake. Slippery yeah. snake over here. <laughs> he's like doing puns all of a sudden when he's been so stoic throughout the whole movie. Yeah. But also, he's mad he's... with power. He's mad yeah. with power. Yeah. He's... Phenomenal cosmic power. Um, when Genie's uh, cheering on <laughs> Aladdin, just it's so funny. Oh, uh, Jafar, Jafar, he's our man. If he can't do it, great! <laughs> it's just so good. I mean, like, once again, these line deliveries are just, like, rent-free in my head. It's one of the best third acts of any Disney movie. It's just fun. It's action-adventure. It's everything you want in a movie like this. And so, and finally, Aladdin kind of... Well, Jasmine's in danger. She's, like, in a, a what, an hour, hourglass clock, uh, sand clock yeah. thing. Uh, and then... Uh, uh, Aladdin in a in a move that I love it's it doesn't end in like him killing Jafar or anything like he outsmarts Jafar clever he's a clever boy clever yeah boy. Jafar becomes sexy genie <laughs> <laughs> yo yo he is ripped wait you're right I mean okay I was a little iffy on the snake but he's definitely kind of a sexy red genie <laughs> Sexy Ooh. Red Genie! <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Sexy Red Genie. So he outsmarts uh, a ripped Genie Jafar by by saying like, hey, well, I, actually before he's a Genie, like, you know, hey, you're still not as cool, as cool, as, as powerful as the Genie. <laughs> also, you're not as funny as the Genie. Can't be as cool as the Genie. <laughs> uh, so he's like, I'll be a Genie. And then he's like, Ha ha, gotcha. You, I don't know why this. I, I have a gun, I guess. But ah, like, gotcha. I got. Gotcha. <laughs> After all that, he pulls out a gun. He's like, "Gotcha, Jafar. You're That's done." The live action. 
that's the live action Aladdin remake that we need. It's actually <laughs> set in like 1980s, like Brooklyn, New York. Ooh. Like, I fucking got you now. <laughs> I got you, Jafar. <laughs> um, so like, you know, he takes out the lamp. Uh, he gets sucked in. Yago's like, I'm out of here. And then he gets sucked in too. <laughs> Itty bitty living space. Oh, yeah. How did we miss that line? Phenomenal cosmic power. Itty bitty living space. <laughs> Iconic line. Uh, so yeah, uh, uh, and uh, Genie throws him away. Uh, they're safe, but you know now now Jasmine and Sultan know he's just Aladdin, and so I think you know uh, w- this is where you know Aladdin's arc kind of com- comes to a conclusion. Like he was so in denial, like I can't be myself. I I have to just keep denying, denying, denying. And the moment where he has to make a choice, like, okay, I could either free the genie or get everything I want. And he decides to free the genie instead. And and it's just, like, this beautiful moment where, like, you know, genie's taken aback. He's like, uh, what did you say? Um, and in this funny scene where he's like, wish for the Nile. <laughs> I wish for the Nile. No way! <laughs> Iconic. Uh, it makes me tear up every time. Uh, and, and they embrace. He's like, thank you for freeing me. Um, and, and, you know, everyone pulls this clip now. But, like, it's it really is so good. Like, you know, uh, um, no matter what they say, you'll always be a prince to me. Yeah. And they hug. And Sultan's like, wait a minute. <laughs> um, I can change the rules. I'm the Sultan. Oh, this whole time I could have changed the rules. Sultan is like the secret bad guy of this movie. <laughs> it is. It's like your stupidity has, has caused all of this. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, okay, you know what, Jasmine? You can marry whoever you want. And, he, and she's like, I choose you, Aladdin. Well, he says... You can marry whoever you deem worthy. Right, right. So it can't just be anybody. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> <a good> guy. <laughs> yeah, come on. He's got to be good. You got to like him. <laughs> uh, so yeah. So um, uh, finally, Genie's like, uh, "Yes, I'm out of here." He gets his goofy hat. Uh, he's going to Disney World. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, he's flying away. It's just endearing. So endearing at this point. He's just like spouting just just these like just like charming oh, things like what does he say like i'm out of here uh i'm history no i'm mythology uh, yeah <laughs> i don't know what i am i'm free or something oh. like that yeah and yeah. so we get we we end the movie um jasmine and aladdin um they embrace genie becomes the moon <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and then finally a genie once again breaks the fourth wall, takes the animation cell out, and goes, made you look. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just perfect. This is a perfect way to end the movie. So uh, final thoughts uh, on the movie. And uh, and uh, uh, Brianna, uh, if you could give this movie a rating out of ten monkeys. Because, <laughs> you know, he's got the monkeys. He's got the monkeys. How many monkeys are you giving this thing? Uh, 10. It's one of my favorite uh, Disney Renaissance movies. I have to give it a 10. I can't, I can't give it anything less than a 10. I mean, like, no, I'm going with 10. It's a 10 for me. It's a 10, baby. Yeah. Uh, uh, Hunter, your 10, please. (laughs) Yeah, dude. (laughs) Your 10, please. Yeah, dude, 10. This movie's fucking awesome like there's yeah. literally there's actually no bad things to say about it other than like the representation and stuff like that but that's right very nitpicky and like every movie back you know what i mean so yeah, yeah i was gonna say the same thing but i can't yeah. not give it a 10 yeah no zero yeah. percent so yeah it's perfect of course i'm giving this a 10 this is such an easy 10 i i just it's one of the one of the finest disney movies it's iconic for a reason it started so much you know as we were mentioning, like, it's just like, it's, it's fun. It's funny. It's heartfelt. It's everything you want in a Disney movie. It's everything you want in a Robin Williams performance. Uh, I, I cannot see any other performance of his being as funny as this. It's just so good. Just like Robin, he's a friend who will give it his all for you. And by the end, he just wants to be free emphasis on free. We've been mentioning this a lot lately in these past two episodes. Um, with Fisher King and World's Greatest Dad, it, like it's it's kind of a weird through line where like all of his characters just want to be free. 
of all of it. And oh. it's and it's just like it's just it's beautiful, but it's also like yeah. I mean that was Robin. That was Robin. And uh, uh, and and just like Aladdin, you, you know, you, you let him go. You know, you let him go. And that's that's when you know you have something special. It's is there anything else to say? He's the genie. Other than that, Nick, where does this where's this at for you? Where's where's it ranking? This is the hardest thing I've ever had to do because <laughs> because I I'm so torn between the Fisher King and this movie because both both of those movies use him actually perfectly. It's going to be so hard. I don't know which one to give it to. Wow. Okay. So, do you want my thoughts? Yeah, give me your <laughs> thoughts. Maybe maybe you'll convince me. Okay. So I am at the same point. I don't know which is number one and which is number two. But what I think, I am rating it number two because, at least in The Fisher King, I get to see his face. And that's that. I don't know if that's a good reasoning or not. At least I get to see him do it. You know what I mean? And it's so tough, and I don't know if it's a good reasoning, but that's my reasoning on why it's not my number one. But it's very hard. That's very fair. Uh, I Unless think... you can convince me otherwise. That... Well, I think what, what makes G Genie so impressive is that it's just his voice, and, so, and we feel so much. You know? I was just going to say, it's probably the opposite. Yeah. It's like... <laughs> There's a million roles in here, and, and he's not, like, restricted by anything. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's hard. I, I'm, I'm going to... I'm, I know I'm going to be like, wait, at, by the end of this movie, <laughs> but... Or this episode, but I... I, th uh, uh, I think maybe number two? I think... I mean, The Fisher King is so good. Like, it's literally, like, the... Perf but this is two, which is why it's tough. This is why these last four episodes are going to be so hard. Oh, dude. Uh, but for, for the time being, I think I'm going to give this number two. So uh, to, put, to put it in order from least to, to my favorite. Uh, World According to Garp. Uh, Hook. Uh, Jumanji. Mrs. Doubtfire. Insomnia. Moscow on the Hudson. The Birdcage. Awakenings. One Hour Photo. World's Greatest Dad. Yarata, Aladdin, and uh, the Fisher King. But we'll see what happens. But th that's my ranking for right now. Wow. Yeah, ours ours are very close. Mine is uh, World According to Garbage, uh, Jumanji, Hook, Mrs. Doubtfire, uh, Moscow on the Hudson, Insomnia, Birdcage, World's Greatest Dad, One Hour Photo, Awakenings, Aladdin, and Fisher King. It you know these are tough choices. I mean, I, yeah, I'm just surprised that Awakenings has now got, fallen to three because that's one of my f fucking favorite movies that we've done. Right. This is your, this is your third 10 now, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. The top three are all, are all tens. Wow. Yeah. This is my second. So Fisher King and this were, are, are my tens, but yeah, uh, that's that for now. Uh, uh, guys, it's over. The episode's over. <laughs> um, uh, Brianna, thank you so much for being such a wonderful, wonderful guest. Oh, thanks for having me. It was so fun. I don't get to do this stuff a lot, so this was really a lot of fun to do on a Friday. <laughs> yeah, Friday nights, baby. Friday We're night. talking Aladdin. <laughs> yeah, mother. <laughs> and thank all of you for listening to our Aladdin episode. Uh, we, you can find us anywhere you listen to podcasts. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, yeah, pretty much anywhere. Uh, shout out to Joey Dalton for the amazing artwork. Uh, we have a website, NYC Actors Talk Film. Just type that up, search for it, you'll find us. Uh, uh, we have a YouTube channel where we do YouTube versions of these episodes. Uh, tune in next week where we'll talk... Good morning, Vietnam! <laughs> Please rate, review, and subscribe. Brianna, where can we find you? Oh, uh, you can find me on Instagram at Brianna Gent and my YouTube channel, just Brianna Gentilella. And yo, my TikTok at your girl Bri uh, underscore. <laughs> 
Yo. Yeah. Check it out. Check it we out. We love plugging those TikToks. Content. <laughs> yeah, thanks again, guys. Uh... Yeah, da -da! <laughs> <laughs> thanks, guys. All right, bye. <laughs> All right, goodbye. <laughs>